in studio with the uh, New York Times bestselling author, John Gilstrap. Good morning, sir. The OG, official Gilstrap. And Jefferson County Prosecutor Attorney Matt Harvey, proudly wearing the letter M to start his name. Absolutely. Just for spite. Just for spite just to certain people who don't appreciate names that have an M. <laughs> Uh, we are scheduled to talk with Majority Leader Eric Kalsoder as soon as he breaks free and is able to give us a, uh, a call this morning. In the meantime, uh, yesterday, uh, the list was released for those who have applied for the sheriff's position in Berkeley County. This, of course, is to fulfill the unexpired term of Nate Harmon, who resigned. The names are Robert Blair of Martinsburg. He, of course, is uh, you know uh, Robbie Blair from Main Street Martinsburg. That's his father. And he's a retired state trooper, commandant, I believe, of the Eastern Panhandle Barrack for a while there. Uh, Jeremy Farner of Martinsburg. I don't know Jeremy, at least I don't think I do. Davy Jones, who I, we've had Davy on the program a few times. Uh, Davy Jones, the uh, address he gave was out of Hedgesville. Tyler John Kalkbrenner. I do not know uh, him, I don't think, out of Falling Waters. Uh, Kenny Laymaster from Martinsburg. I think Kenny was previous sheriff, if I have that uh, Correct. This is Kenny Lamaster Jr., I believe. Uh, Ken Matson, who's a listener to this program uh, out of Inwood. Uh, David Scott Richmond, I believe Scott was the uh, deputy, chief deputy previously, uh, I think, out of Martinsburg. At least I know that name associated with the sheriff's department. And Michael Wood out of Hedgesville. I don't know uh, Michael. I don't think I do anyway. The deadline to apply was 4 o'clock in the afternoon yesterday. On January 11, the County Commission yesterday holds a special afternoon executive session to review applications for the vacancy. Applicants who are selected to be interviewed in an open session of the County Commission will be released to the public following the executive session. On January 16, public interviews of the selected applicants will be held during a special meeting of the County Commission. The County Commission intends to appoint a new sheriff on January the 18th. A swearing-in ceremony for the appointed sheriff is to be held in the County Commission chambers on January the 19th. This is the uh, latest information we have from the County Commission on the Sheriff's opening. I don't know who out of that group they would select. The person has to be a Republican is the uh, from the requirements on there, which is, I'm wonder if I have the right Kenny Lamaster, unless he switched parties because he was a Democrat, I believe. Has to be 18 years old, legally eligible to hold office, must be a Republican and must reside in Berkeley County. Those are the requirements. There was talk that there also had to be a declaration that they would not run for the office in the election, was, did that come to pass? It's no. not on the list of required items. Okay. It, th that's not a legal requirement that's in the code. That was just yes. a, a suggest. That I think they, Bill suggested the that because they had done that before. Correct. And and they, uh, talking to, uh, listening to Eddie and, and Commissioner Gokenhauer and Commissioner Whitaker, they, they were going to not make that a requirement to open up the field. Because if you have really – his explanation was really good. It's like if you have two really qualified people that are interested in running, why would you exclude them and give it to the third or fourth best candidate? And but I will tell you this, whoever gets this appointment, will. it's my understanding, and we had this in Jefferson County with a former sheriff, is that this will burn a term. So they'll only have this amount of time and say they run and win, they'll, they'll, they can only do that one more time, and they'll be term limited out. Really? Oh, this counts as a full term? For who? Wow. It would be one year, right? Yeah. It'll, so basically it would be a five-year gig. And I also understand that law enforcement is not the primary role of a sheriff. A sheriff is the main tax collector for the county? That is correct. And provides process to the courts. You don't have to be a, a legal uh, police officer of any sort. So then how does it come to, at a statutory level, I guess, how does it come to pass that the sheriff's department is is essentially our police department in, in, in Berkeley County? I mean, the deputy sheriffs... Well, they have authority to do policing work. Yes, but you don't have to be a law enforcement officer. But if but what, what ha here, it's, it's not an issue up here in the panhandle, but when you get to other counties that are, are more rural and have less resources, quite frankly, and you've got two or three deputies... And it comes to it comes down to answering calls or serving papers. They're required to serve papers and then tend to the collection of the taxes. That's the a pro, a constitutional priority for them over 
uh, going out and keeping the public safe. So it, that's the that's supposed to be the role of the, it, of it, the state more police. of an administrative role at, in the, in Berkeley County is what it's intended to be because of the tax collection and then managing the deputies. But it obviously is also a law enforcement role. Yes, but like your position, Matt, that you have you, as a prosecuting attorney, it's also an administrative position too. You have to manage the other attorneys and the budget, and that sort of thing that goes along. If you if you were involved in trying cases, that's great, but you're not expected to try every single case. You're expected to be a good uh, custodian of the money that comes in to, to the, the, you know the budget. You, you know what's curious about my budget, Rob? I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> it, it's my operating budget for the Jeff, the operating budget for the Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney's Office is less now in 2023 than it was in 2016 when I was elected. You've been cutting costs, man. I've been cutting costs, streamlining, streamlining and efficiency. Yeah, you're the man. Reducing <laughs> waste. Friend of the taxpayer. Friend of the taxpayer. Absolutely. Speak. Absolutely. We're running. We're run, We're doing more with less. Speaking of a man who's doing more with less, I understand that uh, Majority Leader Eric Halsoder has joined us via telephone. Eric, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Sorry, I was tied up with the speaker for a couple extra minutes there, but uh, I understand. Hey, no, I'm, I'm. Yeah, yeah. Good to hear that uh, Matt Harvey's being a friend of the taxpayer. Good job. Hey, uh, you know, it was pretty cool doing the opening yesterday to the State of the State that... uh, It was. It was. I got to see Eric speaking, um, and then I think toward the end there, too, as you guys were going through some of the parliamentary procedure, uh, Uh you you were there, and when when you were on the screen, I said to my wife, see that guy there? That's the guy that did our HVAC. (laughs) <laughs> there you go. She said, "That's the guy that did. I said, that's Eric. He did yeah. our HVAC." I said, "He's yeah. the majority yeah. leader, and he he does air conditioning systems and heating." Yeah. And cool. so there was a little word I had to practice yesterday. <laughs> it was giving me a time to let it roll off my tongue. Was the word uh, His Excellency? <laughs> uh, it just I had to practice it a couple times, but I nailed it last night. I so. thought you were smooth, man. But, uh, yeah, is yeah, that a yeah. function of the majority leader, or does that change? No, uh, at, ever since I've been here, Erica Storch, Delegate Storch, uh, has always did the announcement. And, of course, she last, left uh, last session, and uh, they asked if I would wanted to do it, and I said, absolutely. So, distinct honor and privilege. So, I was yeah. very excited to do it. So, His Excellency sounds like such a British yes. term. Is that is that well, common for governors to, across the state across the United well, States? Well, it must be tradition because I wanted to say honorable, and uh, uh, Judge Dan Greer was telling me no, his title is the next title higher, and uh, we're considered honorable you know, delegates and senators. So it's just tradition from what uh, Dan Greer was telling me last night. So I said, okay, I'll say it. So okay. And by the way, uh, Claire, uh, just be. Go back. In, yeah. Sorry, I can't speak. Just to go That's back okay. on what Matt Harvey just mentioned about whoever fills out the sheriff's term, I just got a text from Steve Catlett from the county commission that says it's a fact that whoever is appointed to fill out the remaining term of Sheriff Harmon, if they decide to run for office and win, this would count as their first term. So they could only do another four year term after this. So that is correct. That's, that's Yeah, I'm glad he I'm glad he confirmed that because that was what happened with Pete Dartery. Yeah, we're, we're, Jefferson County. Yeah, yeah okay, gotcha. Uh, so, Eric, what did you think of the governor's speech last night and his wish list that he introduced during uh, the uh, latter part of the speech? Well, it was a pretty substantial uh, wish list. Uh, keep in mind, uh, I tallied up about six hundred million dollars in spending. Uh, have you had anybody else on earlier this morning? Was uh, Senate President Blair on yet, or anybody yes. go over the numbers? Craig, okay. Craig was on prior to you. We didn't get uh, we didn't get through the entire list in detail, but he did mention some of the larger ones. Yes, and and from my record keeping here, it, it totaled up to about six hundred million dollars in, in spending. Now, keep in mind, some of it was base building, and some of it was just one time spend. Um, one of the things that I was uh, happy to hear was the uh, total elimination of the state income tax on Social Security. So that's probably about a hundred to two hundred million dollar hit. I don't know the exact figure, but uh, I think that'll be, you know, we, we, we went short several years ago. I think it was in 2018, 
2017 when we did the total elimination of the state income tax on Social Security, which we did not eliminate all of it. Mm-hmm. For your listeners, we it was uh, combined of $100,000 or less or a single person, 50000 or less. You were paying no state income tax. But uh, with the announcement from the governor last night, this would totally eliminate all state income tax on Social Security uh, retirement benefits. So that would be a big win for our seniors. Uh, something else that, that, that would also be attractive to, re- to retirees. To retirees. Retirees. To, yes. To get them to it, move it, absolutely. Yes. I, absolutely. I it would give it would give a lot of our retirees uh, a tax break, especially in the Eastern Panhandle. You know, uh, John Hardy actually has a bill. He's he's talked about it on your show about raising the homestead exemption. So that might be a good segue whenever you get a chance to talk to John about that, too. So we're trying Tuesday. to give as much relief. Tuesday. Well, yeah. good. good. Tuesday, good. John will be out. Something yeah. else that I, I thought the governor was being proactive on was uh, he pledged $150 million uh, to the school building authority. Uh, so, you know, that was some of his bigger items that I heard that, that he mentioned last night. Now, those two items obviously would be uh, – could be base building. Most of the stuff was just one-time spend. If you remember uh, last month when I was on, uh, I mentioned to you and, and your guests that I believe we're going to be around $700, $800 million again for another surplus. Yes. Um, instead of using a lot of this stuff for some of this wish list, I would like to see if you're going to spend the money, use it for deferred maintenance. We have deferred maintenance projects all across the state. Uh, with a lot of these institutions, you know, uh, all these public buildings that the state owns that desperately desperately need some of this deferred maintenance, I think that's what the money should be used for instead of digging a hole. I mean, we just got out of a hole. You know, don't don't be spending this money on some of this wish list items when we can when we could be using it for deferred maintenance and keeping us above and uh, you know still firing on all cylinders. So. Mr. Harvey. Child care tax credit. Yes. What? I think that is uh, crucial. I, that, that one really c- catches my eye. What, what, kind of, what kind of price tag does that have, and what kind of impact could it potentially have? Don't know. He didn't elaborate on any details. Just mentioned that there's a child care, you know, child independent uh, care tax credit. That's all he said. Um, he talked about... He did not give a price for that. And then he, his next thing that he talked about was agriculture labs. He wants to do a, a $50 million investment at West Virginia State University. And some of the things that he mentioned last night, uh, he just talked about, but he, he didn't actually say a price. So, I, you know, from my record keeping, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, I'm adding up about six hundred million dollars, so I don't know how much this tax credit would even cost or what he's even going to, what he's even proposing. So let me make sure I understand this. It was a fifty million in, in state agriculture lab, correct? Right, correct. That's what he said. Yes. So, <clears throat> what 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 do they do at a agriculture lab? I mean, I know they do like like. I'm like so DNA. glad you asked that. Well, I, I, you know, there's like eighty percent of the DNA is. Remember, Matt, a lot of this owned in West a lot of this was short on details last night. This is just a wish list. Remember. You know, the governor can, could make these recommendations, but once we see what's on paper, once we see what's in bill format, then the legislature would decide what we're even going to take up and what we're even going to do. So a lot of these details I really don't know yet. So, Well, as, as majority leader, what would be your wish list? My wish list would be to uh, cut more income taxes. So if you're going to use one-time money, you know, why don't you just take that money instead of uh, doing 10%? And remember, we can do up to up to 10%, but we can do more if you like. I definitely want to see the Social Security tax eliminated. I'd like to see the corporate net income tax come down a little bit. Uh, that would be a huge win, too. So um, how does that's our, my wish list. Eric, how does our corporate uh, net income tax – what's going yeah. on there? Maybe I need to get a different We're, job. How does it compare to neighboring states? Uh, I haven't checked that in a while, but we're at six and a half percent. Other, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Kentucky's at six, and Virginia's at six or a little lower, five point five. It's been a while since I checked, but um, if you notice, whenever we go over the revenue numbers, 
our corporate net income tax has been exceeding month after month after month, and uh, it's usually pretty robust. So I think we could uh, could use some movement there to maybe lower it another half a percent. So, but um, if anything, try to eliminate the personal income tax faster. And I understand that because of the decision to eliminate the personal income tax, for the most part, we are just going to forget about the marriage penalty and concentrate on phasing out the PIT, correct? I, I think that would be a correct, correct statement, yes. Mr. Gilstrap. Good morning, Eric. Uh, Good morning, John. I, I know that there aren't a lot of details provided to you yet, but the, the biggest uh, number from last night, if, I, if my notes are correct, was $150 million for the school building authority. Now, to the degree that you can get into the details or not, what is the it, does that imply one hundred and fifty million dollars worth of new new schools in West Virginia, or is it something else? Not only new schools, but it could also be renovation projects, deferred maintenance projects as well. I mean, just look at the Eastern Pain Handle. We've been very proactive with building schools, uh, but it's been ten, fifteen years on some of these schools where you're going to need new HVAC upgrades, et cetera, stuff like that. So, but some of the other uh, items that the governor mentioned last night was fifteen million dollars to state parks, uh, twenty million dollars to senior centers, uh, two million dollars uh, for, um, or five million dollars seed money for charter schools, uh, fifty million dollars to the flood uh, resiliency uh, program, a hundred million dollars to all hospitals. So there's a lot of uh, stuff here that um, short on details. I just like to learn a little bit more about it. But uh, and so the next one is going to ask was 100 million dollars for hospitals because that's the next highest on on the list here. Uh, again, right. is that improvements to existing hospitals, or are there parts of the state that actually need new hospitals to to, to be it, built? It could be all the above. It could be more access to care. It could be renovations. Uh, but keep in mind, uh, probably the highest the governor did mention a five percent across the board pay raise for all state workers. So um, that also was included in this uh, six hundred million dollar total that I mentioned. So in the next so, step, when you get when you finally dig into these numbers, are you going to open the page yeah. and and for the hospitals just choosing one at random? Will it then inside there say that it's two point three million dollars for this and fifteen million dollars for that? Does it get down to the granular detail? Well, what I suspect that he's going to do, and I have not looked. Obviously, last night at the state of state, the governor uh, and you saw Rob because you mentioned this. Uh, the formality that we did right after the governor got done speaking was to accept the budget. I suspect that a lot of these items are going to be back in the general revenue surplus section of the budget, but I haven't got a chance to walk upstairs to finance. I know the budget analysts were working all last night trying to get the uh, budget prepared because they had finance committee meeting here at 9 o'clock. I suspect, like I mentioned, a lot of this stuff will be in the back of the general revenue surplus section. So obviously, except for the pay raise, all that has to be a bill, but most of the stuff He's, it, it could be a one-time spin that'll be in the back of the budget. Delegate Householder, who was um, or who was who became judiciary chair? Uh, Tom Fast out of Fayette County, and his co-chair Tom was Fast. Delegate Kelly. David Kelly out of Doddridge County. Yes. Besides those two, was there any other uh, changes in leadership or committee assignments of, of the major committees? Not, yeah. Not that I'm aware of. I think Kathy Krauss was appointed to vice chair, chair of a committee, but um, no. I mean, mostly it was just your 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 uh, judiciary chair, so and vice chair. Speaker Pro Tem Delegate Paul Espinosa said that House Finance will hear presentations on the governor's proposed budget at the nine o'clock and three thirty meetings yeah. today. They'll be live streamed as well. Uh, at least the audio, anyway. I'm not sure if the pictures uh, will be, too. But uh, And he posted that link in our comments section on our Facebook uh, chat room there, too. Eric, do you attend those? Sometimes. It depends. Uh, last year, I only went to two meetings up there in finance I attended. But uh, most of the time, I'm just out managing, doing other duties that the speaker wants me to do, go to meetings, uh, talk with uh, groups and so forth. But uh, also the governor last night mentioned $5 million more to the ASCEND program, another $10 million in community and schools, 
Uh, he wants to contribute. Uh, he, he'd like to see us spend another $1.6 million for dual enrollment. So, like I said, overall, it was a pretty heavy uh, wish list. Uh, he mentioned $30 million to train and retain nurses. It was a bill that we passed last year. I think we put $18 million into it, and he wants to put an additional $30 million into it. So, um, like I said, I'm sorry I don't have all the details, <clears throat> but uh, this you heard him, Rob, if you listened in last night. These were a lot of the items that he had mentioned that he'd like to see on his way out. So, I asked Craig this question half an hour ago. I'll ask you as well. You've been through now eight of the governor's state of the state speeches. Yes. Not counting the first year where we know he asked for the half billion dollar tax increase and didn't get it. On the remaining ones, when he proposes his wish list of things to have happen for the year, do you have an estimate as to what percentage of those actually become reality? I don't. I don't. I wish I could have kept a tally of it, but uh, I will say this, that he has gotten better. He's been prudent over the years. Now, when he first started, when he talked about a $450 million tax increase, and then as he progressed throughout his term, he became a little bit more prudent. I, I know he takes credit for the flatline budget, but a lot of that was done with all of us coming together and saying, hey, look, if you're a strong believer in smaller government and limited government, this is what we need to do. He's, uh, he's accepted that. He's kept the budget relatively flat. And then, and from all that, you've seen these huge surpluses that have allowed us to do some one-time spend. Uh, but once again, I think we should use these one-time spends for certain critical items like deferred maintenance. Uh, and that way, we're not digging that hole even deeper. It, last year, if you remember, uh, I know higher education has uh, over $400 million in deferred maintenance needs, uh, corrections. Uh, they have a huge $200, $300 million in deferred maintenance needs. And there's other agencies out there that have the same, not as high, but uh, I think you could see upwards of close to a billion dollars in deferred maintenance that is needed across the state. So. So instead of digging that hole deeper, we need to start using a lot of these surpluses or these one-time spends to correct a lot of these uh, deficiencies. The governor c cited uh, six or seven companies that are either moving into West Virginia or are already here and expanding throughout the state. Mm -hmm. is, is that the beginning of a much larger list for the rest of this year, Eric? Are you aware of uh, a lot more in the pipeline? There are more in the pipeline. I've been hearing the same rumors as everyone else. The governor alluded to some of that last night, and uh, I think we are doing better. I mean, just you heard the governor talk about the tax cut and, and how we're being so proactive, and more and more people are starting to realize, hey, we need to come to West Virginia, and that's what it's going to take. If you could eliminate the personal income tax, once again, you've got to have risk takers that are willing to take a risk, and that's what creates jobs. And uh, we're doing, I mean, in short seven, eight years since the Republicans have taken over, we've been trying to work as quickly as we can, and I think things are getting better. And you're seeing more companies come in, and hopefully we're going to see more jobs. That's the key. I did not hear the governor mention any small business legislation he was proposing. I know uh, Delegate Mike Hornby, the owner of this place, you mm -hmm. know Mike quite well, is obviously. I had a bill he tried to get going last year. He was hoping that we'd get more traction this year. Are you aware of any small business legislation that we might see this year? Well, no, but the biggest one that we passed was in last year's tax cut. Uh, if you, you know, for most small businesses under a million dollars, you get all of your, if, as, providing that you pay your your vehicles on time, you got uh, complete dollar for dollar tax credit, uh, ta or yeah, tax credit. Uh, then then you also got a 50 percent reduction in your machinery, inventory, and equipment tax. So that's the only relief that I saw, but that was in that 800 million dollar package of tax cut last year. So. Any final thoughts, Eric, before you head off? What time is the House uh, caucusing each morning this uh, this session? We're going to start on Monday, but every morning at 8 o'clock. And on Fridays, we're going to start at 7.30 in case anybody has a bill idea that they would like to talk to the members about their specific bill. And uh, that way, if there's enough traction, we're going to give an extra half an hour for people to say, hey, I've got this great concept. I've got this bill. What do you all think? So, but every morning at 8 a.m. Very good. Final, final thought is yours, sir. Anything else? 
Uh, no, I'm just excited to get down here and, and fulfill my commitment to the people, and I'm going to work hard. And uh, once again, I'm always trying to put money back into their pockets. Eric, thank you. Good to talk with you. We'll see you guys. Thanks. Bye. That is House Majority Leader Eric Householder.